it makes us more comfortable uh, to have some sort of ceiling. And it's like, how can you say that God is without limit? But then, you know, OK, well, then we come we come up with some confining thing. So right. it's a lot of contradictions. And it, it and it, I think people are also afraid of this open ended, like everything is too big and too vast and mm-hmm. you can't grab anything. And it's it makes scary. you feel small. It may, yeah, yeah. It may feel really small and powerless and that there's mm-hmm. this God and there may also be this devil and there's this whole this is everything. Whole, it's everything. Yeah, and I'm just little tiny yeah. and you're half like, of ducks, dust. Spec- what do I grab? Yeah. <laughs> what do I hold on to? What do I grab? This is what I tell people. Uh, yeah. I say if God is limitless, how much God is you? How much of God is you? If God is truly yeah. limitless. It's like, do you have a scale? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, of my calculations. Yeah. <laughs> what's yeah. up? What's up? What's up? Good people of the world. Welcome back to the Expression of Love podcast. It is your host, indeed, Soul Expression. And welcome to today's episode of the Expression of Love podcast. I am here talking with Miss Sonia Barrett, Dr. Sonia Barrett. Uh, a good friend of mine, um, which I'm super duper proud to say because Dr. Sonia Barrett or Sonia Barrett, PhD, (laughs) um, a certified uh, psychophysiologist, um, is the executive producer of the award-winning documentary, The Business of Disease. She is the host and producer of the radio show, The Expansion Zone. Um, I have been on the Expansion Zone. It's a really great place to be. Uh, The Expansion Zone with Sonia Barrett on KPFK 90.7 FM in Los Angeles, California, and is a certified HPN, a high-performance neurofeedback practitioner and a personal development strategist. Dr. Sonia Barrett is known for her cutting-edge insights, with much of it uh, supported by quantum physics, Theoretical physicist Dr. Amit Goswami Goswami, uh, refers to her as a true mystic. Her work bridges the gap between science and spirituality in a simplified format. She addresses the programming, beliefs, and and concepts by, by which we have lived our lives both individually and collectively. Dr. Sonia Barrett, CP, teaches and coaches on the natural science of the path inward, the path inward. She is the author of The Holographic Canvas, The Holographic Canvas, The Fusing of Mind and Matter, and her second book, A Journey of Possibilities and Health, an Inside Job and Outside Business, a supplement to the film. Each chapter is written by those in the film, and her latest book, and seven-day program, Simple Ways to Step Outside of Your Comfort Zone, Letting Go of an Outdated Life. She is a popular radio guest appearing on such shows as Coast to Coast AM with host George Norrie, um, Conscious Media Network, uh, Gaia TV, and a host of others. Sonia and I talk about uh, so many things in such a short time. Um, Things like consciousness and knowing yourself from the inside out. Things like expanding your uh, awareness um, or what it's like being in an expanded awareness uh, state of being, you could say. We talk about cancel culture. We talk about uh, pretty much every. We talk about her story and, and how she um, came to write the holographic canvas and, and other things. Uh, But most of all, we talk about getting away from the habit of limiting yourself based on the opinions of others. So I really hope that you enjoy this episode and that you gain gain a lot from it. Make sure that you look out for the new segment, The Expression of Rhyme. Um, Comment anything that you get from this episode below. Like and subscribe if you haven't had the chance already. And I'll see you in the next one. Check it out. Three, two, one. Hello, everybody out there. Welcome back to the Expression of Love podcast. As you all know, this is, I think this is episode 12, something like that. Um, And 
it's just it's just been going up and up like since I have put down my fears <laughs> of creating a platform for people to come and use their voice and speak about things um, the blessings have just been flowing through and I consider this episode in particular a big big blessing today I am speaking with dr. Sonia Barrett and we're just we're just gonna get into some things see where some things go and we're not gonna <laughs> worry too much about where it might end up mm. um, dr. Sonia Barrett thank you for coming on the show so much. Ah. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for having me on. I, I appreciate that. I appreciate anybody who wants to chat with me. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, been, been, for those of you who don't know, she knows, but the, for those of you who don't know, I have been a big fan. My, my wife and I have been a big fan since 2015, 2016 or so. And with the holographic cam canvas um, and reality Wednesdays, um, it's, it's been a wild ride. Reality, reality Wednesdays have been like where, where, where you, where you do this thing where you bring us together and you talk about things and then you just take questions and it's like, we can, we can mm -hmm. soak in your notes and then we get to real time, like ask you things really, really, really great time there. And then, yeah, you're, the holographic campus, the holographic, I keep wanting to say campus, canvas, mm -hmm. it like, it all, it almost kickstarted the next level in my own sort of spiritual, spiritual journey. Um, I wonder if I hear that a lot. Do you? Yeah, I just, I mean, just uh, even yesterday, I from a couple of people. Um, yeah, I, I saw it on um, social media. Mm -hmm. But it's very interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was wondering if we could almost um, kick things off as to what, how, how did how did this book get born? Well, you know, I guess it came about based on my own search. You know, it was my own awakening, my own uh, questioning, my own uh, questioning, and then going down the rabbit hole, um, and 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 then writing things down. I mean, you know, I came to a point where I started writing things down and and then that changed. Uh, and finally, when the holographic canvas was written, it was really, I think there was a moment in time where I had finally reached a stable enough understanding with some things that now that could actually be in the book. Okay, so now that's it. But then before that, it's growth, you know, so you you write some things and you're excited and you got it. And then suddenly it's like, oh, whoa, it's more than that. So that's kind of what happened for me. And I think that the so many people that I, I talked to, so many people that mentioned the book, that it was a big jump start for them. Mm -hmm. I'm excited because it, it, it just, it was my jump start. And, and it's like, everybody is sharing that same jump start you know, that I had experienced in putting out that, that kind of information. Yeah. And you, you know, for, for me, it, it's like, I wanted to be you in the book. Like I wanted to have those. I know what you're saying. Yeah. Certain experiences right. that, that just came to you naturally. And when you, when you, when you say, um, it was like my own search, my own journey, what, what really triggered your, your your search because i'm sure the curiosity came probably years before an actual oh yeah 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 the yeah i mean i i was i tell people i was born that way i was really just born mm. extremely curious about life and um just questioning there's many things that i question that most people wouldn't as adults or as children but like i just what? came in questioning um which is this topic I'm not, we're not going to get into today, but you know, my, my question was, or my curiosity was always about people leaving the planet, people dying. And for a child, you know, which kid is thinking about that? You know, so things right. for me, there were things that were just weird to me. It like, it made no sense to me. Um, people coming and going. And, and so for me, I was, I always thought, 
doesn't anybody else think this is very strange? I, you know, so I refer to it as a big airport, airport of arrivals and departures, people coming and going. Uh, so it was a great many things that were bizarre to me. And, and it was clear I must not, I must have been from someplace else. Money was bizarre. <laughs> You know, it's like I didn't understand why people made such a big deal about money. It was just things that were just very different to me. And I always I always liked it. And your audience would probably be going to go, who is this person? But, you know, I, I always say that I always liked Earth. You know, I always mm-hmm. like I always loved it, though. It was it has always been fascinating. And that does not mean that I did not go through horrific times. Right. But there was always a love that I have for being in this um, video game, so to speak. Yeah. And so no, like realistically um, speaking, this yeah. video game. <laughs> yeah, this simulation. Mm-hmm. And so but but so I loved it. And and of course, I was curious throughout my whole years into my teenage years and I would read books you know like Edgar Casey and um mm. things about the Bermuda Triangle and even as a small Ooh. child I like mysteries you know Alfred Hitchcock mystery I mean it was always just curious about the supernatural and all of that so all right so then I kind of freaked myself out as a teenager as I was diving into some things and um and it was mainly around the Bermuda Triangle and maybe Edgar Casey. It was just some things where I was like, whoa, OK, uh, let me just back up off this for right this minute. And so I just kind of went on and just did life things. It was always there. Uh, but, you know, children, marriage, um, all of that. And so come 92 uh, is when the turning point was. And there are different turning points in people's lives. And um in 1992 was a turning point for me because i i was married i was in this relationship for 14 years um and it was an abusive relationship and when i say abusive i mean physically and emotionally abusive something that you would watch on lifetime channel right and um and so when I finally got out of that situation, when I when I ran away, because I ran, I had two children and I literally ran away and slept in my car um, for, in a supermarket parking lot for 11 days. And um, and there was a peace, though, in those 11 days and all the things that I went through, you know, standing in a food line to get food because I got cut off from all the money uh it was just it was a lot of things that I got to observe and there was always this sense that you know of seeing people that were going through this and I knew I was like wow a lot of these people this will be their their life forever but this isn't mine this is this moment and um and so once I was able to finally get into a place and I, I really like the journey, like now I'm like, okay, what just happened? What was the last 14 years? What is all this? And that's really how that took off. And I just knew that there was a way to know more, even without any books. I was like, okay, mm-hmm. there's a way. So I I read um, Shirley MacLaine, Dancing in the Light and Out on a Limb. And that just told me that there were, was like, oh, there are other people that are asking, you know, questions because I didn't know anything about metaphysics. And um, I, I really didn't have any exposure, per se, to metaphysics coming from a religious background. You know, you pray, yeah. uh, you know, that that was it. So uh, so I came at this raw. So and I I think in terms of what you're asking and for your audience, I think it's, it's really important sometimes that people realize that a person like me came at this raw. Uh, meaning that I came to the table not knowing how to meditate. So I had to learn on my own to do this thing that I didn't know anything about and what was supposed to happen. And so I started from scratch. And um, and then, you know, one moment led to the next. And eventually something happened for me. And uh, breathing, a, a process just kind of took over and from there things started to open up in terms of my awareness and i thought wow i'm like this it was like a child in a candy store and so i was meditating 
like several times a day. I mean, I was at this for, I would say on and on, I'm going to say like 10 years of absolute dedication to doing this uh-huh. thing, to sharpening my ability and my skills and my my ability to tune in and connect and to the point where I didn't need to do meditation like that anymore because then now I realize I'm in that state all the time so yeah so so I had been writing things down uh lots of things because they would just you know come to me it would just pour in um Sonia really quick Mm-hmm. Can so we can so so that I can like paint a little bit of this of the mm-hmm. picture. Uh, well, you can. Um, what were what like one of the one of the things that I'll always remember is um, trying to imagine what it's like to be meditating, and then your arms lift up and like start oh really moving that you kind oh, of cry. Yeah. What 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 was it, it, if if maybe that or just the in general some of the you know well, kind of different experiences from just sitting and trying to stop your thoughts did you um you know did, did, um, did you tap in yeah okay so the good thing i think for me was i didn't know about stopping my thoughts i think that was one of the things i had so little information that i think that helped um I know exactly so, what you mean. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. You know too much. Sometimes you're expecting too much. Right. You, you have all these out. expectations. Yeah. Uh, but so I would sit and I I would breathe, do this, you know, start breathing. And then one day what happened is I guess I took the that breath in just the right way. It's the only way I can describe it. Just the ideal way in a way that obviously maybe my thoughts weren't um, I wasn't over I wasn't doing a lot of thinking monkey mind wasn't moving around and I think maybe I'm trying to go back in my mind I'm closing my <laughs> eyes but, um trying to go back to that moment and I think that um maybe what happened is the desire to penetrate this veil some sort of veil because I know there was more uh I think is what became maybe the focus and so as I took this breath in and I was sitting, then I took it in more and more. And then I start processing this breath. And then eventually it just was this sense of just being filled up energetically. It was like, you're being charged up. And, uh, and I obviously, I guess scientifically now I kind of understand it a little bit more in terms of, uh, brain, maybe brain function as well as, as body. But, um, and so, it filled you up so much. It filled me so much where my hands began to move. And looking back, I realized that my hands were moving to as a way to process some of this energy that was moving through uh, through me. And that was what was happening. It's the movement of the hands was a way for that, the vibration to be processed. Because, you know these like higher vibration which is just higher levels of awareness obviously your your brain um begins to sort of allow you to access more if we take it out of the woo woo state and we kind of try to look maybe at it a little bit more scientifically you kind of see what is happening and it can be an overwhelm to the body because the mind tends to shift first obviously but then the body kind of lags behind so it can be too much now i'm gonna quickly go into say i'm gonna mention this this scripture because it's every now and then i mention it but um there's a that scripture where supposedly where where jesus um when he said to the disciples um don't not to not to touch him yeah not to touch him even though they could see him but they saw him in this space that wasn't wasn't really the same realm the science of it because uh, that's another thing you know okay this on, is this on easter huh is this the like resurrection what, right exactly okay and, so and so what people like have, a light form kind right. of right 
And it's like, don't not to touch him yet because he had not yet, I think, uh, whatever ascended. But I think the takeaway here is when you look at the science of it, and that's what we have to do, um, Soul, is to step back. If we can step back and look through the words of some of these things, there is reason why that stuff got documented. It's how it got documented. And that has thrown us off. And then we become very literal. So if you're seeing this person in this whole other space and you say, don't touch me. And the, and that person is vibrating at a completely different speed. It'll be like walking up to a propeller um, on a plane and putting your hand in it. You can't, maybe you can't see it. It's spinning so fast, but you put your hand in it. It's going to chop up your hand. Why will that happen? Because you are not vibrating at the same rate of speed as that propeller or of that individual. I, good people. All right, good people of the world. You know what time it is. It is officially time for the expression of rhyme. That's right, the new segment of my podcast where I interject a rap verse into the episode that touches on one or more of the topics that my, my uh, guests and I are engaging in. Make sure that you like and subscribe if you have not had the chance already. Make sure that you comment down below your favorite line from this segment and check out this fire verse that I got from Miss Sonia, for Dr. Sonia Barrett. Life is a game. Make it simple and plain. You got too much to gain. Got to grit through the pain. It's a shame. We forget the lessons from Abel and Cain. Since you came to this plane, your potential was weighed against the aims at a lane and you're framed to the grain in the image of God. So don't waste what he made. Just stay in the lane of the path that was laid. Get a taste of the space. Make the most of your days. You get to live because tomorrow ain't a given. You got the power within you to make the most of living. If you ignore your curiosities, then you tripping. You a scientist, traveler with astronomical vision, getting it in within the matrix of simulated reality inundated with purpose to situate your regality, still creating to further the stimulation of galaxies. Your worth never limited by fallacies. I am that I am, I say, you dig it? My pen can I send the physical existence. When I send in my hand to collect the digit, then I end my day with my payment, you get it? That's why it's nothing to spit it with ability. There's nothing in my writings from a place of fragility. Cancel culture couldn't even half get to me. My purpose ain't tied to opinions of rat mimic. Shout out to Sonia for today's conversation. It inspired the lyrics I'm throwing in two rotations. So pass your favorite line around like it's blunt and show them how we get down on the expression of love. Now back to your regularly scheduled programming. Individual. So it is going to be jarring to what? To your physical body. Your right. body's not vibrating at the same rate of speed. Which is why we, you know, we we don't just walk through walls because you, you just don't. So anyway, bottom line of it is, um, and I didn't have that kind of understanding at that time, but this is what started to happen for me. And um, and I just allowed it and I was hungry for it and I was at it all the time. I was committed. So that's a word that people need to get is really mm. the commitment the the curiosity has to be big and the commitment to wanting to know has to be there yeah uh, so that's how, what happened i wrote and then it changed because i grew and then eventually this uh, something said to me my my inner self said okay now you you can take all of this that you've written and i just kind of was just like i allowed myself that part of me to guide me how to put what where and then as i put these different pieces there then um, then I kind of just felt, okay, so expound on this right here and then go and grab this reference from here to support this. And that's really what happened. Yeah. So it wasn't like I just sat down and I'm like, okay, I'm going to write the holographic canvas. Like, <laughs> First chapter happen. is going to be about this. Then it's the going to be about, yeah, it just didn't <laughs> happen like that. And so uh, I just... I, you know, I just was in the flow of, of it happening. And, mm -hmm. uh, and then when the book first was written, it was called, um, it was actually called Forgotten Gods. Ooh. And yeah. That's and, just as juicy. Yeah. It was actually <laughs> called Forgotten Gods. And, um, and, and then 
something else happened the, the week it was supposed to be printed, I got a sense that that wasn't really the time. Maybe that'll be a title use for something else, but um, it wasn't that. And what I got was the word holographic. And I was like, oh man, holographic, what though? Holographic, what? And, and so I'm like, what, what, what? And then eventually, because I was kind of irritated because I thought it was, it's being printed. I'm like, oh my God, come on now, self. <laughs> and, then the word, <laughs> and the word canvas eventually got uh, added. It was like, oh, okay. And then I needed to, so the book got printed, I think, without with, without the tagline. And eventually somebody else said to me, um, who was in the notes, like, you know what? You should add a tagline. I'm like, oh, oh my God. So I was talking to my younger son and I was telling him. And then he just, matter of fact, says, why don't you just make it the fusing of mind and matter? I'm like, duh. He's like, that's what you're talking about. I'm like, oh, okay. And so, um, you know, I have a joke with my kids because I'll say, oh, finally, a reason for your birth. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. That's really funny. So that's what, so that's how it all came t- together. Yeah. So, so that's it. So that's how the holographic canvas was born. That, that's the. Man, that, story. that is beautiful. You, you know, firstly, before I even say too much about that that i had a meditation experience myself very recently because i've been committed for i'll say i'll say i really kicked kicked it up a notch in 2016 so six years i've been Mm -hmm. i've been committed and i've been super committed for the last year and a half because every friday i do meditations on zoom i I lead Mm -hmm. free free meditations here on Mm -hmm. zoom and when I but this experience happened by myself in my room and I was so I had let me see how do I basically I had already been privy to what many people in spiritual circles would call the witness or the observer the mm-hmm. sort of presence of awareness that's not personal right right hiding it's behind. just there yes yeah, yeah. it's there it just her. watches yeah, 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 absolutely nothing personal or doer about it, right? Mm-hmm. And um, I felt I, I've connected, I've tapped into that much before. Mm-hmm. And it was during a time, have, have you, um, what's, what's your relationship to cannabis? Do you, do you, are you use, do you ever use, you, you started, mm-hmm. stopped or anything like that? No, I'm the the weirdest Jamaican person. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is never, never had an interest. Yeah, I never, I never had an interest. Everybody <laughs>, laughs. My kids laugh. Well, trust me, my kids made up for it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Callie. Um. Okay. So. So. I. So. Okay. But then you. You. You may still know if you're. If your kids. You may still know this phenomenon where you can take what's called tolerance breaks. Mm-hmm. I had just broken a tolerance break with cannabis uh, earlier that night, came in, wanted to use the, the rest of it to, you know, do a little silent sitting meditation. Right. And I sit and for I usually sit on my bed. For some reason, I sat on the floor right in front and, and used the, the, the back of the bed, bed to yeah. lean that. Right. And, and I'm sitting um, for about... 10, 11 minutes or so. Mm-hmm. And then the first sort of stage of expanding towards that threshold of heavy, super fast vibration, mm-hmm. but not seeing it yet, where mm-hmm. I sank, where I call I sank into myself. Okay. And it's like, I was no longer sitting. My body was obviously, but I was no longer, like it wasn't me. The body was sitting. I was more so like- You were more astral. That was dissolving. Yeah, 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 mm-hmm. yeah, yes, mm-hmm. yes. And in fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about that very thing. So 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 I sank into myself, and it was it wasn't completely new. I had done this before uh, a couple years back, but it was the first time since then that that I had sank into myself this way, and it was very easy for some reason. Mm-hmm. Um, shout out to the cannabis. 
<laughs> and I had this desire, like how you, it's almost the same thing as like this desire that I didn't cultivate, I didn't think about beforehand, sort of just very nicely, slowly crept in to, ex to, to expand, but I don't mean physically, right? Just, just to right, see right. what's on the other side of what Energetically I- Energetically expand, right. Yes, mm -hmm. like I wanna go to the other side of what I know and how mm -hmm. that works in my imagination is the consciousness that exists in like the heart space, I want mm -hmm. it to bubble out beyond my skin. Right. And be outside of me. Mm -hmm. So, so I'm sitting there and, and I'm just sinking deeper and deeper and deeper into this more so the observer, the presence, not that my personal mm -hmm. self until I reach the vibration stage, which is very commonly mm -hmm. talked about as a, uh, something you, you pass through to get to to actually astral project to project mm -hmm. out of your body. And now then I get not excited to where I wake back up, but excited. I get, you know, happy, like, okay, mm -hmm. this is very new. This has never happened before. Mm -hmm. I've heard about it, I've read about it, watched a bunch of YouTube content on it, but I've never reached vibration state. Mm -hmm. It's very, very fast and very you know, mm -hmm. super duper intense vibration. And then I start to hear that loud, high pitched tone mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. is so loud, but you know that your ears are not what's picking up this sound. Right, right. And then the craziest, when I say this is the most bizarre thing that happened to me happened, I didn't, I, it's like I was in the hallway, I was right at the door at the end of the hallway. Mm -hmm. And I touched the doorknob to open the door and get to the other side of the door. Mm -hmm. But I did not reach the other side of the door. My body gets shocked electrically. Mm. There's physical pain. Mm. I'm sitting here very relaxed. There's no mm -hmm. tensing up. There's no nothing. Whole shock. It, was, it felt most heavily in here and at the, mm -hmm. the root chakra around the root mm. of space. Mm. The big shock. Huge. Like you almost imagine thunder happened. It didn't. Right. And, um, and then, and then, so, so that woke me up. It, I mean, it, it hurt. So that, I was right. like, okay, whoa, am I like blocked? Mm -hmm. What, what, you know, what, what was that? Mm -hmm. What was that? I'm just, just very curious. A lot of questions going very rapidly, but I was more, I wasn't mad at it. Mm -hmm. I was actually happy. I was just, I was like, this was, this was great. Mm -hmm. So I go back, you know, I, once my, the pain went away in about a minute, right? Mm -hmm. 60 seconds. It wasn't pain anymore. It was just, just, just kind of curious. And so I, I sat back down mm -hmm. and uh, this time I'm able to kind of, sort of, kind of, sort of, kind of, sort of consciously sink into myself. Mm -hmm. It's hard to explain because that's not an effort, but it's like a, right. something new how to do it. Right, right. So I sank in and it took me less time to get to where the, the, uh, the vibrations start to creep in. And then after maybe five minutes, they get more intense again. I start mm -hmm. to hear the thing again and I get shocked again. And it mm. shocks me out again. It, it, it's like, what is going on here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, that would be sort of the end of the actual meditation thing mm. that happened to me. But mm. since then, I've gotten a lot of messaging that mm. right now I can't touch Christ. Right now, in this, in this time, I'm incubating for something that's going to align every that's going to align everything, mm. and I'm learning like patience and stuff. And it's been really clear messaging. Like I'm not torturing mm. you, I'm not punishing you, but you have to wait for a moment. Mm -hmm. um, the same way that you know. I it's would timing. say things yeah. to you about like my money situation before. Mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's some of that I, I was made privy that it, it wasn't a, I wasn't stuck. I was mm -hmm. being taught certain le certain things because right. like a grand finale is on the way. If I, right, if I, right, yeah, yeah. It's and and that's the thing, you know. As they say, um, we use the word or the concept that it's timing, but the reason why, as you said, that why those moments of timing come up is the um the course like you take a yeah, actual course 
you know, everything that we do is a course. You're taking a course. You're in this sort of learning. Um, it's like being learning how to be a magician again or, uh, it, you know, all of that. And so, yeah, so that moment, uh, yeah, you weren't ready. And I, I had that. I had that uh, moment. Some things like that would happen to me. Mm. Where I actually was told, okay, well, you know, okay, when when you're not ready to go through this door right, right. now, and uh, and I get it. And but at the time, you know, you're like, you know, whatever. No, because it's really easy. Sorry to yeah. cut you, but it's, it is okay. really easy to be like, well, why'd you show me the damn door? So Don't you show me the candy. <laughs> And put a lockbox like, on it, like <laughs> yeah. It's like okay, well, here's the goal. Here's the goal. Here's the goal line right here. You, you, you know? know, but there's so much. I mean, I look back and I look at so much that I had to learn because there's so many behaviors that we have. So much program, interruptive programming. So much what we would probably define as bad behavior. But I know when I look back, there was a lot of things that I um, did, even though I was so aware, I had behaviors in, in, in the matrix. I had behaviors that um, that needed, I needed an evolution from that. I needed to evolve. Mm -hmm. uh, and, it, and it's constantly in layers. It's happening, you know, all the time. And these are the interrupters. These are the things that where people end up feeling stuck, where they get stuck yeah. in a pattern, where they feel like they can make no uh, breakthrough but I tell you the greatest thing is to take ownership that that is like the greatest thing is to own like go ahead and see yourself go ahead and see your behaviors and be okay with it and go okay all right yeah yeah okay right and we can change that and it's not like a blame game it's right. just that is interrupting you from entering into whatever that next level of understanding and awareness is because you need to, you need to clear different le levels like anything else. You know, you go work a job, you're not going to get the promotion unless you have mastered some things. Well, some people end up getting promotion and they, <laughs> they didn't master it, but ultimately it will show yeah, up right. that it's there. a problem. Right. So, so we are doing that every step, every step of the way. And it's a matter of, people being okay with putting in what we probably will call work to the point until mm. it's not work till mm. you realize that it's really not work. This is just the journey. And this is what I desire for myself. I desire to have these greater levels of knowing. And in order for me to do that, I've got to clear the cobwebs. I've got to clear some old beliefs that, you know, that, that been part of my history, my bloodline, right. my whatever. Um, so and you, and yeah, you know, so I think that's, Sonia, that's what happened. Me too. And, and you know, I think one of the, um, biggest things ab about that is we look at, we tend to look at as a human family, all across, across mm -hmm. cultures, backgrounds, religious beliefs, uh, uh, spiritual practices, whatever you grew up with across, like almost every human being, we see someone else when we get into on the path, whatever the Mm -hmm. formation of the path is still the same path when we get on the path we say okay what did they do right and it's one of the first and like longest lasting mistakes because it, we keep doing that until something sort of you know light bulb goes off that says oh it's that this is part of the root of why um i'm not getting the progress is because i keep asking what did, what did they do yeah, but see, right. here's the thing. Yeah, and the thing is, Saul, is like, even though you can ask that question, the challenge with that, what you're saying, which is true, people will ask that. They don't even necessarily ask. They just go ahead and just start doing that limiting thing. Yes. Whatever that person was doing. And, I, and for me, like you, I'm always looking at, I'm like, uh, yeah, well, I look at where where that person is not moving or growing or whether they, if, if they died still, I'm like, uh, okay. So there was, you know, what did this person miss? So if anything, I more look at, okay, what did this person miss? Yeah. Uh, as opposed to doing the same thing over and over. You're right. This is why the human race, this is why we are where we're at um, because mm -hmm. we are relying on science to tell us it's okay to now move to this next level. That's how we are. We need permission. We need somebody to tell us that it's okay. 
Yeah. Uh, and I'm all about, no, you as an individual representing the whole have the ability to decide whether you want to ex- evolve yourself or not. You don't have to wait for everybody. So that, that's always my thing. So that's a good Absolutely. point that you raised. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, we, we have this, this, this has almost like evolutionary habit of what are they doing? And, and then, and then we don't actually get an answer before, as you said, we just start up the mimicry. And so there's no desire for true understanding before starting again, the, the limited, what, what ends up being the limiting practice, which for the first guy was not limiting, but for you it is because there's no, because theirs came with the curiosity that you were talking about in your story. There's right, right. with the curiosity. Yours came with the expectation. I'm supposed to do this and get this from it. Yeah, just like the game of telephone, you know. So by the time, <laughs> right. <laughs> by the time right. you bring it down the line, it's like, oh, I think we're supposed to worship that person. No, that's not what was said to begin with. So yeah, that's absolutely what happened. They turn it into a worship and um it, it's just really and it just removes you completely from yourself from your own evolution because you're so busy worshiping uh something or someone yeah. so yeah th- those are really 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 good points and you know w- one of the things um that reminded me when you when you mentioned that about coming to the store um and then you got so this feeling of being shocked uh i remember moving into a space there okay so there was a day where i was in this different level of meditation you know i'm like really like out there and um i'm in my room and remember now i'm i'm now a single mom i'm divorced i have the two boys and you know when i stopped to feed them or give i mean they were old enough but you know give them something to eat man it was just everything was disruptive of what i was doing <laughs> I'm like, they gotta eat again. I, I, <laughs> I'm so I used to say that to him. I'm like, you ate yesterday. <laughs> so, I fed you yesterday. Yesterday. Come on. <laughs> so this one day I'm there and I'm and I'm in this space and and the vibration that literally I would feel it. It was so intense through my whole body. And I came out, remember I came out of the room. And the the I, the two kids might have been in the kitchen, but my older one might have been there. And I think he was maybe, I think it was maybe 12, 11 or 12 at the time. And he said to me, he says, I, he says, I don't understand. It's just so weird. I feel like I'm walking like outside of my body. The entire house had gotten caught up in whatever that vibration was. Cause he didn't know what I was doing mm-hmm. and he was just like, I feel like I'm like walking outside of my body. And right then I knew I was like, Oh, um, so, so those things happen. And one, another time I was, I remember this, I was, um, I was directed to like, okay, you need to go have some ice cream, like, like literally grounding, things to ground me because I was always floating so much off and I had to be grounded because I had life happening. I had the kids, I had things. And so it was like pulling me back. And I literally was like, okay, you gotta go have some ice cream or something. You got, you got to ground yourself. So these things, these experiences are real. They're scientifically for lack of a, a better word. We understand the word real, but um, these things are a science. They are not like woo woo. They are science. We operate, everything operates at a frequency and we are operating at these various levels of frequency. And, and in terms of the space that we occupy, in terms of the realm that we're in, there's all these different realms. So I could be, you could meet, be in a different, uh, in another realm. It looks the same. But, but now you're operating at this higher frequency realm um, where you see some of the same things, but some of the story of that space has changed. So I think people really need to understand that, you know, the whole body yeah. vibrates. It works. Everything works off of some level of um, frequency, which is, uh, you know, talking about vibrations, cycles per second at which uh-huh. uh, everything is is spinning. 
So I, I really like to throw that stuff out there because so we yeah. take that out of that that space. We are scientists. We are all scientists. We are astronauts. We are explorers. We are just tra time travelers. Well, and, and what's yeah, crazy is what happens. Expeditions. And what's crazy is what the deeper you go into science, the more philosophical you become and vice versa. The more philosophical you get, the more uh, scientific you start to, unless unless you're just dealing with like the semantics part of right. philosophy, but yeah. real philosophers that, uh, how Alan Watts used to say, real philosophers up. that go outside and stare at the stars for hours mm -hmm. before writing anything down, stuff like those philosophers, they get more and more scientific. You do. You realize that in the end, you know, that's that's what happens. That's the growth. That's the growth that happens. That's the evolution that happens. So you get the parables in the Bible and you get the stories. And that is to prepare the mind. And um, there are aspects in the, in the scripture, since I haven't read my Bible in a very long time, but um, <laughs> there are a couple of scriptures there that talk about... Um, um oh god oh, oh god i can't even remember the scripture now but it has to do with those who can't not those who can who have ears to hear but it described the levels at which one can take on information. the farmer sowing seeds there's that but there's the one about the meat um okay oh gosh i can't remember it right now but yeah but there's there's the parables are there for for right. uh, a reason oh and and the story of Melchizedek, I always like the fact that in the story, they it says of whom we have many things to be, um, to be uttered, but we can, but can't because seeing that ye are hard of hearing, like okay, because of the idea of Melchizedek having neither beginning of days or end of life, and it's like we have things that we could tell you. But but we can't because you can't hear it. Another another passage um, had to do with uh, I think Nick is it Nicodemus um, when when Jesus said to him that um, if I've if I've told you of uh, earthly things and ye believe not, how can I tell you like which way the wind bloweth or something to that order? So my point is, uh, I throw nothing out. You see, this is where I'm at. So I, I'm not like going to go off on people with the Bible. No, what I've come to realize is how encoded our lives are, our world is. And if you can't get out of your hate and your um, hangups long enough to be a coder and a decoder, you're going to be feeling like you're stuck. So I read right. everything. Like ev everything has meaning to me. I like read all of life. That, that's what I learned. You read that's it all. Cool. It's all just information and it's how you you decode that information and if you're open enough to not put limits on what reality can be because Saul you know that's another thing we do we like yeah. what feels comfortable so we put reality in a box we put creation in a box and it can't be these things it can only be this well the minute you do that is the minute you have limited the possibility or what you could possibly be introduced to You've limited it to what's comfortable for you. So your brain goes, oh, okay, then I shall only show you the things that your perception can handle. I will only introduce to you and allow you to see those things that are comfortable for you. And it happens like that every step of the way. So if one wants to do that, guess what? Free will. Don't ask that question anymore. Do we have free will? Yeah, you do. You get to decide, you get to choose, you get to do all kinds of stuff. And that's a choice. Not because God doesn't want you to know. It's right. Like, you know, that's a choice. And there's a responsibility and there's work involved with questioning. And some people aren't up for that. Just give me right. a packet. Give me this information. Tell me what I should believe. And then I will just use that. And um, and then maybe I'll go to heaven. And then I'll, I'll be okay. So... If that's what you want to do, you can do that. That's that's free will. Right. Well, I mean, where you think heaven is, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> if you're not if you're not there, meaning you're dead, then w there's no heaven. <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> where is it? Is, did you, if you're not, the, uh, you know, if you want to get to heaven, 
you have to be there. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. You have it, to, well, yeah, you have to be aware. You have to be available to yourself. And it's not about, exactly. yeah, not about, you know, um, focusing so much on a space that you have no knowledge of, but all you hear about is a lot of information about it. It sounds good. It makes people feel good because people do need, as they say, we need a, they need an anchor. They need something yeah. to look forward to. I get that. People need hope. And at the end of the day, to feel like, okay, I don't know what happens after I leave here, but I have this information and I feel secure about that. I'm going to go there and, you know, all will be well. And that makes people feel good because what? It, they don't have to worry about it being so unknown. It's, we fear the unknown. Uh, but to be present and available to transformation and to expanding is going to ultimately show you more of what that is without having to actually necessarily take the journey, take the trip like that. Um, and it is a trip because what, you know, this, this is what's happening. We're all in a, on a, a psychedelic, a trip, you know, chemical factory. Mm -hmm. So that's probably why I don't do anything because <laughs> I'm already always on a trip right up here. Right. Yeah. No, I mean, hey, hey you know, <laughs> with the with that, I mean, even like I've 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 been on some pretty uh pretty like seven gram shroom trips myself. Oh and, yeah, the plant will take you there. Yeah. Well, and well, well, you 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 come back down. Well, you you do you come back down. It's a matter of sustaining. And you don't, I you don't bring it back with you. That's the, yeah. like what, what happens if, if I make this point um, really quick, what happens is you're, you, you're, you're, you're um, introduced mm -hmm. to get an a glimpse. expanded, yeah, like to an expanded self-awareness where it's not only that your senses are sensitive, but your intuition is on super hyper, um, um, you can see into the future if you feel like it. You can see into mm -hmm. your past. Some people take certain psychedelics. They can see like what they call past lives or maybe right. according to some theories, it's just parallel lives, whatever, because mm -hmm. time doesn't really move anywhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and 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 then you're, you're sort of there and it feels so obvious that this is actually more real than the uh, sort of... Uh, sober awareness right sober right awareness. the constant one mm -hmm. but that can't be true because when you come back the reason why we have such a hard time putting into words a psychedelic experience is because at least for a time at least for a time this mm -hmm. is what's real mm -hmm. and so i guess what i was trying to say earlier is this is what you make heaven yeah and you can the first thing is to accept that heaven comes with pain that perfection comes with flaw, that, you know, that what I thought about what's best could be wrong. I could, I could need upgrades, you know, whatever. Right. My thinking. Right. And then that helps alleviate some of the self judgment on I've only gotten this far and other people have gotten like way farther than me or, um, and I don't just mean success, but that's, you know, one of You're the. You're talking in, in general, in, yeah, in, like general. in general, in, yep. in general. Yeah. Yeah, well, like, you know, in, in the holographic canvas, that's why I said real, you know, is realm of focus, real realm uh, reality, you know, they're they're all offshoots of the same word. So wh wherever that focus is, um, that's what's real. And there was something that you just said, and I was going to say something about that. Um, I was going to add to that. What was it? Um, oh, you had talked about um, real. Just, I, it'll I, come said, back. I said you're there and it's like really obvious that this is way more real than the sober seeing I, was that oh I mean, yeah okay so you back. said that and mm -hmm. oh okay so you're saying that it's it's temporary and i think yeah what happens is like for me what happened is is that it just became a constant but different now when i when i was first doing it or if i really go into one of those meditative states it is your your mind your brain will actually react like you are taking um 
you're on a a some one of the um plants one of the mm -hmm. uh medicinal uh interdimensional right. plant experiences but and all it does is it triggers the dmt which uh, you are right. your brain already produces so i think that's but in what like happens hundreds to me. of percent more it, exactly just, right yeah. so i think that that's what happened to me and i didn't know anything about at that time and then eventually mm -hmm. i i wrote about it in the book eventually i i i got it um and so you start to live more from that space like your eyes are open but you're meditating but not like we think of meditating and you can see and tap into like pretty much anything um people who you didn't know or you don't know, you can pick up a read on them. I'm saying that's how my life is. I can pick up a read right. on like people and, and, and anybody. And my cousin would trip out about it because I was a child. I was little and people she was talking about, there's no way I would know. But then I could tell her about the person. Like I, I could tell her how that person was. And she's like, how do you do that? But it's what? Because it's that whole idea of time that you mentioned. It's like everything is happening all at once. It's like all accessible. Uh, so so I think for me, really getting into, the more I get into that space, the, the freer it makes you, the freer you become, the freer you are, and you realize that your life will be start to be less complicated because you right. stop living from a state of survival because state of survival is more it's attached to uh the matrix conditions the matrix the standard matrix programs the protocols that we um tend to want to operate by and so it's a, this whole different set of rules and that's what everybody wants is to become freer Everybody wants to become freer. And like, um, I don't know if you were part of that workshop, the one of the Reality Wednesday, it was maybe a couple months ago. And I mentioned that um, to people, maybe it was the last one, where I said that, uh, uh, how was it said about money? I said, oh, because we, you know, when people say, I'm, you know, I'm not made of money. And so I was telling people, well, actually, no, money's made of you. Mm -hmm. And so for a lot of people, it it hit home like it's a completely different realization to realize if we go oh yeah well i'm really the universe then you know everything is really made of me and and right. money is made of you and so it's a whole different mindset if we change a lot of these yeah. things because much much of the things of what we say and what we understand um are limiting and they're instructions for our brain and our mind to keep us in um, deficit, in in sort of deficit thinking, uh, whether it be love or money or, or right. you know careers or whatever, it keeps us in a lack thinking. But then if we well, start yeah, looking, we can, like reversing our it. yeah boundaries, like creating yeah. self imposed boundaries. Yep. Um, it you you it, that makes me so excited because I so during a couple of the meditate like when I when I do a guided meditation on Zoom maybe four or five, four or five people in, you know, at, at most, I think the most I've ever had is like eight, eight people on at once. Mm -hmm. And I'm leading the, and, and depending on who's there, I never write them down beforehand. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what's going to come out. Mm -hmm. um, but a couple times the right people were there because that very same point of, yeah, okay, you're not made of money. No, money is made of you. Money is inside the bubble of you. You're mm -hmm. not inside so the what I said a couple times just during the guidance during the what what come out came out of me was you can see the sun and you know by scientific discovery it's very far away. Mm -hmm. Yet where does that happen? Inside mm -hmm. of you or outside of you? The sun being very far away. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the clouds. You see the cloud, you know physically you can't is too far to jump and, and touch it. But right. where is the cloud happening? Inside of you or outside of you? Right. And it sort of brings this almost hope well hope, you know, I guess the hope is it brings this sort of aha, this this Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, wait a second, come in to think of it. You know, it's yeah. it's that, right? Because we're used to quantifying everything. We quantify and measure 
Um, well, and we take ourselves to be our body only. Right, exactly. Like, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm my body, but also I'm the space and time in which a body can manifest. Mm -hmm. Because without the space and time, the body can't be there. So I must also be the space and time. Right. And space right. holds everything, yet is formless. So, yeah. I love it. I love it. And and that's exactly one of the things that, that I've said is that, um, you know, when we want to tie everything to um, to the idea of of consciousness, we, you know, everybody says, OK, you know, well, yeah, well, ultimately, like consciousness is it. And I, and I always say, you know what, if we can define it, it's not it, because that which Ooh. is cannot be defined. <laughs> Right. Really, it right. just it, you can't define it. You you're just gonna be it. Um, but again, it's in the name of quantifying, and because it makes us more comfortable, uh, to have some sort of ceiling. And it's like, how can you say that God is without limit? But then you know, okay, well then we come we come up with some confining thing. So right. it's a lot of contradictions, and it, it and it. I think people are also afraid of this open-ended like everything is too big and too vast and mm -hmm. you can't grab anything and it's it makes scary. you feel small it may yeah, yeah. It you feel really small and powerless and that there's mm -hmm. god and there may also be this devil and there's this whole this is everything whole it's everything yeah and i'm just little tiny yeah and you're like ducks dust speck. what do i grab yeah <laughs> what do i hold on to what do i grab this is what i tell people yeah. i say if god is limitless how much god is you how much of god is you if God is yeah. truly limitless. It's like, do you have a scale? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, if my calculations. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we do. We feel better when we can pin things down. And, um, mm -hmm. and you know, creation is, is that's why it is a mathematical formula within the context of um, having to have form. Yeah. There's calculations in, in, in that context, but then, everything is made up of color light and sound in in the interpretation of reality that we have because you know yeah. reality reality can exist in a way that we cannot even wrap our minds around where none of our scientific formulas mean anything none of right. our um verbiage mean absolutely anything and i think that's what so challenging too for people maybe even for scientists mm -hmm. is you know they need to break it down to okay we discovered you know quarks or we we right. discovered you know um these these other particles and you're always going to be discovering it's because it's endless you know right. it, but, but we're going to discover according to where we are as we're going to if i say as okay in one way, as the human race, as we can allow ourselves to uh, even allow a possibility, that's how scientists are op are operating. And scientists, as Doctor, um, uh, what's his name, um, Rapai, Totia Rapai, who wrote the book uh, The Culture Code, which I love his work, um, and and he was saying, no, I lost my point, but anyway, but that's what he is talking about it's like science actually wait science is actually is waiting for human beings and we think it's the other way around but right evolution you know it, it helps them to evolve to what they can see as a possibility right. right and that's how they're operating in their own level of boxes as to what they can accept as a possibility so you find that they get into conflict with each other um no and historically that, that makes a lot of sense true. too that yeah science is waiting for the collective evolution more way more than the collective evolution is waiting for a science for a for right a absolutely so now you have them saying well human beings technically looks like human beings are really going to start living to 120 so now you get people who are like now they're like okay they have approval to live to 120 I mean, that's how it is. Oh, the lifespan is to 85. Uh, and so we get these these protocols and these conditionings and these programmings every step of the way. And for me, stepping back and when I started to recognize that, I'm like, wait a minute. Life has just been nothing but suggestions. 
So you mean all of this is just suggested? Like, I don't have to, like, I don't have to do any of that. I don't have to make my body live by any of these rules. It's just you suggesting it. Okay. Mm. And of course, I came in knowing that it was suggestions. I didn't understand it that way. But mm. later on, I realized it's just a, lot, a life of suggestions. And then we live by that. And then our neighbor seems to be going through the same process. So, okay. So that suggestion must be true, must be real. That's And that's how it works. Everything you got, is you, you got my uh my thing my thinker going because I'm like hmm that's it's wild huh when you think about it it is super wild and yeah. and 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 our behavior has a lot to do with that but also there's one thing that's not suggested never suggested but everybody knows which the spiritual masters call like and 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 as you said, this is not to be woo woo so mm -hmm. far out there. Nobody can understand it. Right. What the spiritual leaders call the I am. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. is not a suggestion, and nobody has to tell you about it or point it out for you mm -hmm. to know it or yourself. But it's also not your. It's not your personality. It's more intimate than your mind. Your personality your sleep schedule, it's more intimate than everything. Mm -hmm. Because without the I am, which is, it's just a name. It's not a right. definition. I am. But that's that's it. I it's am, just I am. And that covers everything. else. Right. Yeah. It covers and so any we, and everything. Yeah. And so we, we, th we think through this whole process of we split things apart to make new discoveries and try to see how small we can get or we, you know, use the telescope and try to see how far we can get right. and how big we can get. And we just keep getting bigger and bigger and smaller and smaller. But there's one thing that just does not change, does not move, does not care. And, <laughs> and, <laughs> and it just observes, it allows. But it's the most intimate, mm -hmm. most constant, most tr 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 true in terms of like, true for everybody, not just mm -hmm. like my truth, your truth, mm -hmm. true um aspect of existence at mm -hmm. all and and it's i guess it's also the root of why we'll never get small enough and we'll never get big enough is because there's something that's unchanging that comes before discovery right, right. which is more so interpretation it's not really it was that all which there. just is yeah mm -hmm. that that which just is um and yeah and that that is definitely something that our our system and our society um, because that is the job of our system and our society is to help people to uh, stay away from themselves. <laughs> right. That, you know, really, because if they if if people were more in touch with that aspect of self, the game wouldn't work the way it does, because there'd be nobody to rule. There'd be nobody to, you know, people are scared. It, it All of that would not be there. And the thing that's also important is that everything that that we do that the system does that those who govern all the things that appear to be limiting they're just doing their job that that's you know it's everything creation is ultimately everything so everything is happening now the question is what are you doing and what do you mm. want to happen in your your reality that's it everything mm. is going to be what it is and it's always going to continue to um we're going to continue to have these things that these experiences or these projections that look limiting, but they happen as part of a way to push us forward. Some people will be pushed forward. It's like, you know, whoa, you, you're moving into your own. But if it didn't happen and everything was just the same, you know, we say everything was peace and everything was just this, you know, what would be the momentum, you know? It, particularly here in this reality, that's what this version of reality is about, the polarization. It's just polar opposites of everything. And we don't know how to be neutral. We don't know how to be center. But it is about the extremes. It's, we swing this way or we swing that way. But right. what we're learning is when you're able to be in that balance, in that center, there is no big opposition meaning that you don't have to be this thing or that thing but right. you recognize that everything is happening as it should the question right. is where am i in my understanding and as i can you continue to climb 
up, that version of reality will always be there for someone. And that is something that we don't hear much of because we always think that we're going to make it go away. No, you expand into a potential a, a, a space that may not reflect that particular experience. You're going into, you're stepping into uh, another choice point, uh, right. another potentiality of time and space. That, whatever that was that we were dealing with before, somebody else will always experience it. It's the game. Somebody's mm-hmm. going to come in and they need to experience you know, whatever the insanity of our politics and so on is, but then you move to a different space and it keeps going. So it's not about, you know, we're going to, we're going to just make peace right across the planet for everyone. We yeah, don't know what your, everyone your favorite, wants. Uh, love and light, everyone. Oh love yeah. Light. You're, you're, you're <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One of the things that, um, that kind of relates to, uh, what you were just talking about, especially like when we when we look at how almost unnatural we make ourselves mm-hmm. in the name of conformity, in the name of uh, social norms and taboos mm-hmm. and things, is mm-hmm. the uprising, the arrival mm-hmm. of something that my generation is calling cancel culture. Mm. Cancel culture is the, it's it's instead of a tyrannical sort of, there we go, instead of a tyrannical um, um, like government body doing the silencing, now it's minority groups coming together and doing, I guess, internet silencing, but they also have quite an, uh, 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 a sort of pseudo power where people who are, can't, you know, quote unquote canceled do lose sometimes their livelihoods and their their access to getting, you know, more opportunities in their industries, da 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 right. down the line. And I think this really, really, really is coming from the same mentality that we were just sort of that you just were sort of touching on of um where we just create smaller and smaller boxes of this is what life is supposed to be. And then we try to not only do we try to live and and limit ourselves to those boxes, but now we're also trying to limit other people to those boxes. And if someone who is an influencer of some kind says something that contradicts a belief of yourself or your movement, then it's like this whole explosion happens and everybody's screaming, this person's a racist, this person's a sexist, this person's a homophobe, transphobe, da 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 down the line, fat shamer, slut shamer, all of these things where, yeah. where you're you're not supposed to question my movement, anything, right? You're not supposed okay. to contradict me kind of culture. I think it all comes from that, that same thing of this is how life life is in this box right here yeah well it's a new format yeah it's a Uh it's a new it's a new um like we said you know it's a new ordered world um when i wrote about it before so it's a new ordered world and that's the order and the thing is that they the systems in place from politics to religion to um whatever the other corporations are Um, other institutions, they have been gradually, and I've been saying this for years, they've been gradually creating a more fragile society. Mm. And that's what's happened. They've created a more fragile society. And out of that fragility, obviously, is going to come sensitivity, uh, sensitive to everything. And the reason for that is the reason why people get into these fragile states and these sensitivity states is because we live in a world now of denial. Mm. Uh, no one wants to take ownership of their traumas that they are operating by, which is why we make the choices that we make. So we live in a world now where instead of addressing the traumas that many of these people have dealt with, we are now forced to um, to agree to a behavior that covers up the trauma. 
Mm. Let us not, which is why you get, you know, you're this and that, and, you know, you, this is what happens. It's like, oh, no, you can't say that. You don't do that um, because we don't want, we don't want to address the trauma, the elephant in the room. Oh, okay. Well, that's how you feel. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's how you feel. Oh, this is wonderful. You feel like this is what you are. Oh, that's, that's, that's great. Yeah. We're, we're not, we won't question, you know, all of what you experienced as a child or whatever. We're not going to do that. Don't let anybody talk about it. And this has nothing to do. And I, I was talking to a friend of mine mm-hmm. who's a psychologist and a couple of people. See, this is where we get confused. We we get confused because we break things down to morality. Morality is a construct. If you look at the science of life, that's it. There's not a moral issue about much of this. This is this is a lot of scientific um issues here in terms of even how trauma affects us we can you know you can look they've looked at the brain they see how we uh have trauma affects people how we respond what are human beings designed to do survive right, right. so we will initiate so ways to, do, to survive mm-hmm. right yes we, th- that's what we do. So, so we see this fragility that has happened, this sensitivity, and we see now that don't anybody interrupt me as I run my survival program. Just agree with my survival program, and then in order to for you to really agree with it and make me feel comfortable with the survival program that I have chosen, we're gonna make everybody get on board and agree it's like a child playing a game right i'm the leader right yeah i'm the leader okay everybody better agree when i'm the leader or else i'm going to take all my toys okay so and everybody's like okay we we agree and this is what what's happening everybody's forced into this agreement or else you're going to be punished it w- whatever that may be the punishment is we will pull all your ability to either make money or earn money, um, have a, an expensive career. These are people that are in the limelight. You must yeah. apologize. We don't care if you mean it or not. You must come out and apologize because we can't have you affecting the masses that are so asleep that they only are going to go with what 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 celebrities or those in the limelight will say we cannot have you interrupting that so for me yeah it's a it's really big and luckily i'm not big enough or important enough um to really because if to say the truth to go out there and say what i have to say they would not you know really want to hear that because again it's not a morality issue i don't care about Mm -hmm. morals that's a construct I care about the, the the construct of a human being, the design of not just a human, not just the technology of the body, but the entire system that have continued to reproduce and produce on the planet. Right. When we look at that, morality got brought into the equation for us as human beings as just a subtler way for us to act really according to science so when we're thinking you know it's a moral issue it, it's it's more that just like parables in the bible is how right. get, it, it's fed to you right so we think that we are have a moral obligation well when you are in an expansive state when we move into our awareness state guess what we don't have to worry about being doing the right thing or the wrong thing morality because much of that is based on survival you stop yep. operating based on desperation and survival. And so you're not going to do anything to another person out of your own fear. Right. We treat each other the way we treat each other. That's because of fear. That's a survival response. Right. So we live in a world right now where it's all about these survival responses. And you're, and you're not going to survive. <laughs> you're yeah. not, and your body's not at least. Your body... Yeah is not going to survive. Because there's too many lies in there. It's, it's that and, and and why why just be here for 
a thousand years. Why? You just gonna be well, yeah, well yeah perpetually here on this rock. There might be other places. Who knows? I don't know. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't we're just people just not here in this version of reality long enough to discover themselves and to get that aha moment of yeah, oh shoot, there is more. What they get sold is the idea of, yeah, well, you know, then every I don't I don't want to be here if I'm gonna be sick, if I'm gonna mm -hmm. be broken down. Well, because so so why does it have to be that? So that there's the programming. We see it on commercials all day long. You know, if you're 85 or older or 60, now they do like 40 sometimes or older, you know, so so we get that programming. So a small child is watching TV and getting the programming even at two. Yep. So that when they get into these uh, uh, more expansive cycles of life, they already have the program. And and like. It's, I don't know if it's 70%, it's some st stupid high percentage of most um, popular channels on television. Uh, so, uh, just some crazy high, like 70% of the commercials are pharmaceutical commercials. Oh yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a large amount. It's a large, if it's, it's pharmaceuticals and depending on the channels you're watching, because I, I'm fascinated. I love shows. I love Mm -hmm. movies i love i like watching um just certain certain shows i'm yeah. fascinated by what's written i'm fascinated by where we are as a society mm -hmm. i'm fascinated by what's being projected so i like watching old westerns right so okay. I'm, I'm watching these old westerns and i guess on those channels you have probably a lot of older people so man they sell life insurance i i back to back and my husband laughs because i cannot find a remote fast enough to mute it <laughs> <laughs> i'm like if i hear him talk about this damn life insurance one more time <laughs> you know so i'll mute Go stuff to the general and say sometime yeah yeah sure. it, it's is that and whatever that other one is but or i think general is car i don't know but yeah but yeah yes. all life all of it all of it is insurance and and insurance these all these insurance ads or any of the ads are always reminding people be very careful. Well, are you insured? You sure? Do you have, you know, whether it be auto insurance, life insurance, don't mm -hmm. let your loved ones be, you know, be left with. You can you get know. more so from your social guilt. security check. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a lot of guilt and a lot of survival. That's the next tactic, right. you know, in your sunset years, you got to be doing this thing. So every leg of the way we're we have protocols, we're instructed from preschool on, there are these different levels of instructions, and that's what I'm talking about. Those are the suggestions. They implant the suggestions from there, and it's new levels of that, that suggestion. But the thing is, in the very beginning, the foundation was laid. The foundation was laid for the mind to be more accepting of whatever the new levels of information um, right. is going to be. So the cancel culture... It is so much BS to me. It is so much nonsense. It's such foolishness. Right. Uh, you know, I, I can't even I can't even look at it. It's so much foolishness, whether it be I, I'm not going to call any names right now. Okay. But uh, yeah. but but yeah, but there's a lot of foolishness with it. And yeah, it, it helps if people can wake up and realize, wait a second, why? Why am I mad at this person now? Because I yeah. didn't agree with what they said. No, and it's it's and it, it it oftentimes it's I'm mad at this person because my friend's mad at this person because their friend's mad at this person because their friend actually has some sort of gripe with this person, but that even that gripe is unfounded. That's an unused mind. Yeah, that and that's a that's a vacant like mind said, right there. Like you said, we're we are being conditioned to be fragile as a mm -hmm. collective society, Western Western first world countries or whatever. We're being that's so more mm -hmm. and more fragile. Yeah. So and suicide is break. up because of right. uh, the children. As a child, do you remember even anything like that where you're hearing of classmates and, you know, or any of that? We didn't. But now we have created, there's a, not we, but they've created mm -hmm. this model of fragility that the more they market suicide is the more it becomes this option of 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 jumping off the the wheel of getting out of there so so it's this weird the weird dynamics with it with with how it's marketed you're telling people about it but at the same time 
it's being marketed as an option, just as they're marketing other things as a, as an option. Um, and people, are, because they're sensitive, well, social media, well, get your child off social media. You know, such and such said, you know, this about your child. And what you're going to, your, your child is going to kill themselves because of this is what was said. They're, talk about fragility. That's fragility and creating a more uh, uh, accepting mind, a, a, a mind that is more easily molded that's what that's created a mind that is more more easily molded um when you when you have that and the system where we're going right now they need people to be more malleable to yeah. the yeah. suggestions yep uh vulnerable and, and that's what's happening you. yep absolutely um thank you for your thoughts on that and um i ask all of my guests it is the expression of love podcast uh before they go, I ask if they can give, and, and long answer, short answer, whatever comes to you naturally. Um, it is a bit of a loaded question. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What What is love to you right now at, at, in your stage of living? What is love to you? Well, you know, love, I guess, I, I'm just gonna go back to what I wrote in the back of the book because to me, that was like the that was it that was the greatest when i realized that the idea not the simple idea <clears throat> excuse me that we have of love but love this technology love is allowing it is incredible allowing allowingness and when we look on and we say once again do we have free will well, apparently we do. And there is love because we are loved and that love is allowing. We have the platform to play on, to be whatever it is we want. And ultimately, who judges us? We judge ourselves. Obviously, we're not being judged because we're being allowed to be. What we have are, for every action, there's a reaction. Nobody's doing anything to anybody we're allowed to me that is love it's the allowingness the allowing we step back and we allow others to be what they need to be we allow that's you know that's the way that i can describe that is the allowing that that right there mm -hmm. helps to neutralize for me all those things that we talked about with cancel culture and stuff you step mm -hmm. back and you realize okay that's those are just other potentialities in the game of potentialities everything is and what we're witnessing are aspects in the field of potentiality being played out dr sonia barrett thank you so 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 much for coming through the show again we gotta do this again too come back <laughs> maybe later thank again. you that was fun thank you so much yeah always awesome. great chatting with you so thank you thank you for what you're doing you're doing a, a really fantastic job of um of exploring your own what creation and expression and bringing others into your um playground yep you know, absolutely to participate come into the sandbox baby yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. Expressions of love. love, love, love.